Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a look at the upcoming game in the Premier League, Watford versus Chelsea. Watford are without a win in the Premier League yet this season. I smell a banana skin and you know what this makes me think of when Chelsea came up against Palace who went on like a seven game run at the beginning of the season without a win and without a goal Roy Hodgson's Palace or Roy Hodgson just took over anyway Crystal Palace and guess what they beat Chelsea <laughs> so Chelsea absolutely mustn't be complacent in this game and obviously they've just come off a loss themselves so there's a lot to unpack in this video quick reminder before we get into things to subscribe to Football Therapy is I upload Chelsea Football Club content every single day and I don't want you there to miss out on any content so please do subscribe hit the bell notifications icon and like the video admin out the way let's get into it so yeah Watford have been better defensively certainly they kept a clean sheet last time they played against Bournemouth and Bournemouth can score goals remember Chelsea were on a superb winning run and they had what can only be described as a relatively abject performance against Manchester United. Sure, they scored a great goal through Michy Bashwai, and you know, maybe they got a bit unlucky in the sense of the two goals Man United scored were both dead ball situations, one being an absolute worldie from Rashford that you know only goes in one every 50 times, but what a goal it was. And obviously, generally, Manchester United had quite negative tactics, but that's up to Chelsea to solve. They did it against Burnley. They they did it against Newcastle they should have beaten Manchester United in my opinion but they're still on a good run in the Premier League so this is the chance for Chelsea to really impose themselves before the international break and be like yep you know what we are still on it in this competition Watford will absolutely fancy a win eventually so they're gonna probably go for this and remember they're at home Sanchez Flores does set up his teams quite well defensively so Chelsea will probably have a task on their hand to unpick them yet again, but they're going to have to have that creativity. Let's do a little bit about how this game's going to go and open that analysis screen. Boom, boom, shaka. Next to me, you can see the formation and personnel that Watford sent out last time when they played Bournemouth and drew nil-nil. Look familiar? The same formation Manchester United played against Chelsea that Chelsea really struggled to break down. A 5 Three, two. Much like Manchester United, Watford don't really use a proper, proper number nine. Like for me, Rashford is not a number nine. And when they play a 5 3 2, they obviously have Rashford and James. So it's kind of the same if you consider like Pereira and Delefeu. I don't think he's going to play Gray. I'm not sure what Dini's about anyway. But the point is, I reckon he's going to go for a similar thing here. Chelsea cannot get complacent for a multitude of reasons. Mainly that Watford have decent players, man. Obviously, you can see Chalaba starting in that lineup there. I'm not sure who'll play against Chelsea, but Dakure has not been the same. And Kapu, you know, what's happened to all that? Kapu and Dakure in the midfield, too. They were imperious, bro. They were sick. Kafka, yeah, man. They've got decent, sort of solid defensive players as well. And Ben Foster is no mug, apart from when he's having to ship eight to Manchester City because the team in front of him falls apart. But they won't be doing that now. They're solid before anything else, and they will absolutely look to try not to leak anything at home against Chelsea Football Club. Delefeu has been on a really, really quiet streak as well. And let's not forget, he is an incredibly talented player and can score really technically beautiful goals out of nowhere sometimes. And remember Pereira last season as well. Him and Delefeu were absolutely shredding up the scene. So these players have got it in their locker and they're just waiting to it to wake up I guess at any point it's that's dangerous for Chelsea because they'll fancy it. it's been like um you know clean sheet against Bournemouth they've had a whole week's rest they're at home they're gonna just fancy going for it and that's a problem for Chelsea potentially remember people will expect Chelsea to beat Watford and that doesn't help <laughs> It's like Chelsea were expected to beat Manchester United at home, especially seeing as they were in some poor, stinky form. And then, you know, complacency comes in, rotation comes in, or whatever. But hopefully, Chelsea's stronger lineup than what they played against Manchester United. See, that feels weird playing a weaker lineup against Manchester United and then going full strength against the Watford team that hasn't won this season. But that's just league prioritization I guess. Right let's switch the lineup over to Chelsea. Oki Koki. Now this match preview I have waited to watch Frank Lampard's press conference so I know that Rudiger is out, 
Kente is still out, and Barkley is still out. So the midfield will probably be Kovacic, Mason Mount, and Jorginho. I know Jorginho and Kovacic both played midweek, but there's great chemistry between them, and I don't think Frank Lampard will want to jeopardize that, so I can see him playing in the Premier League. One thing Lampard did mention is Christensen's pretty much ready to go, so I can see him giving Zuma a rest after midweek and bringing back in Tomori, and I reckon he might actually partner Tomori and Christensen together. It might not be the best partnership in terms of chemistry and skill sets, but in terms of just fatigue and rotation, it could happen. One very peculiar thing I've noticed is Frank Lampard is not talking about, nor is he being asked about, is Emerson. Alonso's having poor games. Surely, you know, press conference, Joe knows would be like, yeah, dude, where's Emerson? Wagwan. But he's, he's not, he's, no one's talking about it. So I guess he's still injured, right? Because he's such an important player. Surely if fit, he'll come back in, especially when Alonso has been playing game after game after game. Failing that, and if you ask me, because Azpilicueta was rested midweek, I would move Azpilicueta over to left back and start Reese James at right back. Because Reese James hasn't played that many games this season. He should be good to go again. So I genuinely would play SP left back, Reese James right back, and then Christensen and Tamori as centre backs. Like I said before, Mason Mount returns to the midfield for cover and JJ to all hang out there and do bits. And Tammy Abraham is going to come back in as striker, but who is going to flank him? I would not be at all surprised to see Willian in this game. Um, he does. He's greatly fancied by uh, Frank Lampard and he hasn't played for a little while, so I see Willian coming back in. And whoever starts this game. I think won't start the Ajax game. Pulisic has got two starts in a row, so I do probably see hudson Adoy playing on the left, Willian playing on the right, and they do actually play pretty well together, those two, so I think that completes my starting lineup, which is decent. Anyway, let's get rid of this analysis screen and talk about the game a little bit more. Boom, boom! Sanchez Flores is a defensive coach. He'll be looking for a shutout at the very least. He'll probably know he's not expected to beat Chelsea, but he will fancy it. He will try and inspire these players like look guys you're good Chelsea have lost they won seven games in a row they've just lost that you know they're going they're no longer at home you guys can you can do something here I believe in you <laughs> best team talk ever they'll be looking to break the lines with Delafeu and Pereira and Chelsea could be vulnerable to that just as they've shown to be vulnerable against United, certainly the opening day of the season. And just generally, uh, possession teams can be vulnerable like that. If uh, Mason Mount comes forward and Chelsea turn into a 4-2-3-1, there's vulnerabilities either side of the engine room for runners to go through. But really, even if Chelsea can see, which they might do, Chelsea needs to score goals again. The thing is, the last three games in a row Chelsea have played away, they've scored three or more goals. So they haven't really got a problem scoring on the road. But it's an incredibly defensive setup with five along the back. It could even be five for one sometimes. So it's gonna be about unpicking the lock really, getting Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham to combine between the lines. And this could be the perfect game for Callum Hudson-Odoi to score his first Premier League goal. It would mean a lot obviously, and it would be that kind of game where it will require someone to wrong foot a defender and curl one in. And that's absolutely his game, you know. And it's games like this, man, I can't wait till Ruben Loftus-Cheek is fit again and returns to the side because I think I still maintain he's going to be a huge player for this side. Like the video if you agree with me about Ruben Loftus-Cheek. So yeah, it's going to be difficult, dude. It's going to be frustrating at times. If Chelsea concede as well, they need to keep their composure. Remember, Chelsea is still quite a naive and young side. If they try and unpick the lock, they're struggling, they're getting frustrated, their frustration leads to a counter-attacking goal. They can't lose their heads, their heads can't drop because Chelsea have the quality to go back, score one, score two, score three. They've done it recently. I'm going to do a score prediction here. Oh, it's difficult. I don't... Okay, so Watford aren't scoring against Bournemouth. Now, Bournemouth are a settled side. They're getting better defensively, but I just fancy Watford to eventually score a goal, and I have a feeling it's going to be against Chelsea. So, I think Chelsea will win. I don't think it's going to be as comprehensive as recent games, but I think Chelsea are going to win 2-1 and concede a counter-attack goal. But they'll get the points, and that's what matters most, or at least I hope so. Because uh, you can imagine the headlines if Chelsea fail to beat Watford or lose to Watford and, you know, therefore concede to Watford's first win of the season, it will be the wheels have come off, the comparison to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer when they start losing. All the headlines will come through, but to be honest, even if they, the worst happens 
than they do lose to Watford. Oh, I've got a lot of belief in this Chelsea side in terms of the camaraderie and the belief in the coach and the ability in the coach, um, more so than I think United have with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Get down in the comments below. What do you think? What are your score predictions for this match? Do you want to join the Football Therapy Discord server and talk to me on Discord? Because you can. Link is in the description. And you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick, Twitter and Instagram. Don't know what else to say, guys. I've given you my ideas, my thoughts, my opinions, my school predictions. So let me know yours. Enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.